The late Jurassic era is a time of giants, when sauropods traverse the landscape. From the long Diplodocus to the tall Brachiosaurus, but none are as common as Camarasaurus. These robust animals have spread far across the continent, their size and power making them all but immune to predators. But this is when they are adults, and very few get that far. Fully grown Camarasaurus are mostly seen out in the open fields, feeding on all but the highest trees. But growing up, they stay within the forest to hide from predators and feed on low-lying plants. In one of these forests is a group of young Camarasaurus only two meters tall. One day, they could reach a towering seven meters tall. This group has 20 individuals, all the same age. They used to be hidden beneath the forest foliage, but now at this size, it is hard to miss them. With size, however, comes security. Most carnivores in this forest cannot hunt them, now that they are so large. And the super predators like Allosaurus usually don't come this deep into the forest. But there is one predator they still have to worry about. A medium-sized hunter that rules these forests. Watching the young Camarasaurus from a distance is a large female Ceratosaurus with a distinctive facial scar. At seven meters long and almost a ton in weight, she is almost overqualified for hunting in amongst the dense conifers. She watches the juvenile sauropods for a short time, and then breaks into a light jog. Her expertise at moving through the constricting foliage is so great that she has passed the first Camarasaurus before the alarm is raised, and soon she is moving amongst the startled herbivores. The female doesn't go for the slowest or weakest like she usually would. Instead, she has positioned herself in the middle of the group to get a better look at her prey. Scanning each of them, she instead picks out the largest of the group, who has the most meat. Although the Camarasaurus herd is bolting as fast as they can, their bodies aren't built for speed, and the Ceratosaurus is easily capable of keeping up with them. Selecting her target, the female goes from jogging to sprinting, weaving between two other Camarasaurus to get to the larger individual. Now right beside the terrified youngster, the Ceratosaurus lunges forward, grabbing the middle of the Camarasaurus's neck with her jaws, her long teeth piercing through the tough hide. Despite being quite large, Camarasaurus bones are very light. In fact, the female Ceratosaurus is heavier than her target, and when she pulls her head down, the young Camarasaurus is forced to the ground and pinned against a tree. He struggles, but the predator pins him with one foot and then thrashes her head from side to side, cutting deeper into the victim's neck, while his death does not come quickly. Eventually, the Camarasaurus stops gasping for breath and goes still. By now, the rest of the young herbivores have disappeared deeper into the forest. As the female begins to feed, a male Ceratosaurus soon appears. This is one of her packmates. There is more than enough meat for both of them. However, he will have to wait. She is the group's alpha, and trying to jump the queue could get him exiled, or worse. Far away, the Camarasaurus have regrouped by a creek. Despite the ordeal, they are busy feeding and drinking. They have seen countless of their number killed at this point, from being snatched off the floor by Ornitholestes, being swarmed by a pack of Stokosaurus. Once they have outgrown the forest, they will move to the open areas and join an adult herd. But to do so, they must consume as much as they can. They may put on over one ton a year, becoming some of the largest animals ever to walk the planet. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down a truly titanic creature, Camarasaurus. Camarasaurus was a sauropod genus that lived in the late Jurassic period, between 155 and 145 million years ago, and its remains have been found across the United States, including Wyoming, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. It belonged to the Macronania clade, which are sauropods that stood more upright 
had shorter tails and had more robust, boxy heads. Brachiosaurus is also in this clade. There are four subspecies of Camarasaurus, being Grandis, Lentus, Luis, and Supremus. The smallest subspecies got up to 15 metres long, 7 metres tall, and weighed about 20 tonnes. But the largest subspecies, Supremus, got up to 23 metres long, stood 9 metres tall, and in the high estimates, are believed to have weighed 45 tonnes. Take that weight with a bit of salt, though. The name Camarasaurus means chambered lizard, which refers to the hollow chambers in its vertebra. These chambers would have had air sacs that would have been connected to the lungs. This intricate respiratory system not only served in making the animal lighter, but also helped get oxygenated blood along the animal's long body and neck. Sauropod skulls usually don't fossilize well, as they are normally quite frail, but Camarasaurus skulls were quite robust, so many have been preserved. The blunt and squarer skull was held vertically, so it could reach high foliage, though it may have had a bit of trouble getting down to drink, like modern giraffes. The teeth of Camarasaurus were chisel-shaped, and spaced evenly along the jaws. Though they were 19 centimetres long, only the very tip of the tooth would have been exposed outside the gums, and were likely covered in a tough outer layer. As tough as they were, each tooth was replaced every 62 days. The size and hardiness of the teeth indicated that Camarasaurus tackled rough plants that other sauropods didn't or couldn't go after, allowing it to coexist with multiple species without directly competing with them. Being so large, Camarasaurus would have had to consume a huge amount of food, so it likely had a massive gut protruding between its long legs. The tail was a lot shorter than most sauropods. However, this is a common trait amongst the Macronania clade. We know that Camarasaurus laid eggs. However, they weren't found in nests. They were deposited in lines, which implies that the eggs were laid either in cover or lightly buried and then abandoned. The parents would play no role in rearing the young, who would fend for themselves from the moment they hatched. There is also good evidence that Camarasaurus lived in herds, as three individuals, two adults and one juvenile, appear to have died together while crossing a river. So it seems that they had herds of all different ages. How many they had in a herd on average is speculative, however. Studies of one individual's bones revealed that it was 26 years old at the time of death, and that the species likely reached sexual maturity at 20, with the theory that sauropods live on average 70 to 80 years. Camarasaurus is not only the most common sauropod found in the Morrison Formation, but the entirety of North America. Its large size would have protected it from most predators, while its ability to not only get at high plants, but also tackle the toughest ones, probably meant that it outcompeted most sauropods, as the most common of its time. It may not have been completely immune to attack, as one pelvis fossil shows bite marks from an Allosaurus. So they definitely ate Camarasaurus, but did they hunt full-grown adults? Like most predators, if the opportunity arrived, they would have gone after young, old, or injured individuals. The vast amount of fossils we found have given us a great understanding of this genus, However, it isn't very well known compared to other sauropods it lived alongside, like Diplodocus, Brachiosaurus, and Apatosaurus. Maybe because compared to these giants, it's considered a medium-sized sauropod, which is crazy when you think about it. I've grown more of an appreciation for Camarasaurus as I researched it, and hope that it gets more attention in future media, and from the general public. But what do you think of Camarasaurus? Do you think it adapted well to become the most common sauropod in its region? Or do you think it looks a little slow, both physically and mentally? Until next time, thank you for watching.